In this video we're going to be talking about projectiles. Projectiles are objects that move um, through the air, so they're experiencing free fall, which uh, ties back to what we did in the last unit. Specifically we're talking about objects that are moving both horizontally and vertically through the air. And we're making that basic assumption that we made before as well, that the only significant force acting on the object is gravity. So we're assuming in the horizontal direction that uh, there's no serious forces and in the vertical direction all that we have is the force of gravity and again that's going to lead to an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So horizontal, we're assuming an acceleration of zero because of the no forces and vertically we're assuming an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course the negative here is referring to the idea that the, uh, that the object is accelerating down. The trick to all of these problems is going to be to remember that time passes the same for the vertical and the horizontal motion. So that means that if we know an object is uh, in the air for a certain amount of time, that that's going to imply in both the vertical and the horizontal direction. So in most of these problems, we'll have enough information to get time either vertically or horizontally, and then we'll be able to use that time in the other dimension to finish solving the problem. I'm going to do a simple problem here. Then I'm going to stop just uh, and then start another video for the second problem just to keep the videos short, although they are related, obviously. So here we have a simple situation. Here's, uh, we can imagine a table. Here's a marble, and it's going to roll off the end of the table. So it says a marble rolls off the end of a flat table at a speed of 2.5 meters per second. So this is 2.5 meters per second. The table is 2.0 meters above the ground, so this distance is 2.0. Determine how far the marble lands from the base of the table. So we're asked for, if we imagine a, this was straight down, how far from the base of the table, so if this marble falls like this and lands, let's say, right here, how far from the base of the table. In this situation, we're going to divide our information up vertically and horizontally. Uh, because it's a projectile, again coming back to that assumption that the force of gravity is the only force acting on this object. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the vertical direction and zero in the horizontal direction. In the, if we look at this V1 and we see that it's coming off this table perfectly horizontally, what that means is that the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is 2.5 meters per second as expected. In the vertical direction, when this marble initially rolls off the edge of this table, it's going perfectly flat. And so what that tells us is that the vertical initial velocity is zero. It's not going up or down at all. Finally, maybe one of the harder ones to see is that as this marble goes through this drop, its displacement in the vertical direction is going to be, careful here, negative two meters. It's going down two meters, that's why it's a negative two meters. So the displacement is negative 2.0 meters. I guess if you forget your negative there, it'll just work out into something that you can't solve, but still to get it right in the first place, it should be negative. So that's all our given information from the question. And what we can see here is we've got three items in the vertical direction and only two items in the horizontal direction. We don't, what we're interested in, by the way, is the displacement in the horizontal direction. So we don't have enough information to solve for this horizontal directly yet. So as discussed above, we're going to find the time in the vertical direction, recognize that the amount of time that it's in the air, the time of flight, if you will, is the same in both the vertical and the horizontal direction. Time doesn't know if you're talking about up or sideways. And then as a result, if we can find the time vertically, we can apply that time horizontally. The equation that relates time and the variables that we have is that delta d is equal to v1t plus 1 half 
a t squared. d is negative 2. Here I'm using down as the negative direction. v1 is 0, so that whole term goes to 0. Plus 1 half, that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. t squared. So just getting rid of my negative and doing the one half here, I get negative four. And keep my units around, try and be as proper as possible. Negative 4.9 meters per second squared. And that's uh, times t squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4.9 meters per second squared. I'll get 0 0.4082 seconds squared is equal to t squared. And then when I square root this t, I guess I should think that I'm introducing both the positive and negative roots, so this should, could possibly be plus or minus 0 0.639 seconds. But the negative time here doesn't really have any real meaning. We're only interested in the positive root. So we're just going to use 0.639 seconds. So that's the time, according to the vertical, that it's going to take to fall that distance, regardless of the fact that it's moving horizontally. But if we apply that time to the horizontal direction, we can see how far in, in uh, the horizontal direction it moves in that same amount of time. Now you might look at this equation and say, since my acceleration is zero, I can use the simplified equation for uniform motion. Uh, and that's fine, you certainly can do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my five equations of motion anyway. And the reason that I do that is if the acceleration wasn't zero, I might make the mistake of using that simplified equation. So if I always use the bigger one, then the chances are I'll never accidentally make that mistake of using the simpler one when I don't want to. Uh, my displacement is equal to my initial velocity, which is 2.5 meters per second, times my time, 0.639 seconds. And here, my acceleration is zero so I used a formula that I didn't need to use, but since this term has a zero in it, it just goes away anyways. And at this point, it turns into the simpler equation. Multiplying those two together, I get 1.5, well, that's pretty close to 1.6 meters. The second cancel. So the horizontal range, is 1.6 meters. So I'm going to just pause here. I'll start another video with another example, but just keeping the video short.